Have you ever achieved a goal you set yourself only to be left feeling empty or disappointed because it didn't feel as good as you thought it would? You will always find yourself going up and then back down until you make your goals align with the desires of your soul. Your life journey has brought you to this moment. If you have been looking for a sign, this is it. If any of this resonates for you, then tune in to today's episode. Welcome back, Soul Tribe. On today's episode, we discuss soul goals with Carla, aka The Soul Coach, based in Derry, Northern Ireland, with her husband and four children. I'm really excited to have Carla here today. She specializes in life coaching and holistic well-being for mind, body and soul. Her passion and purpose in this life is to enable people who are soul searching to rediscover and reconnect with who they really are so that they too can live a life that feels good from the inside out. Carla's educational background includes two degrees in social work and social psychology. Carla spent 10 years as a health service manager in the learning disability sector before retraining as a life coach specializing in emotional health and holistic well-being. Carla is now based within the beautiful and tranquil setting of Shipkey Natural Health Clinic and Day Spa Derry. She's also a qualified energy therapist and also hosts a popular local inspirational book club, as well as an individual and group work sessions on the practices of meditation, gratitude, and living in alignment with your mind, body, and soul. So with that said, welcome, Carla. It's a pleasure to have you join us on the Divine Feminines podcast. We appreciate your time and energy. How are you doing today? Hello, Steph. I'm doing great. Thank you very much for having me on the podcast. I'm really looking forward to getting into this chat. And not only do I love your accent, I have to say, (laughs) there's nothing quite like a Derry accent. I I know a few people from Derry now. I'm feeling like there's a reason for me to keep going back to Derry. So you're another reason. (laughs) I love the accent, but I adore your energy. And I'm really glad that our, our paths have crossed. And I'm really excited to have you here today. Oh, thank you. I feel the same. So that's actually a great alignment. And so in terms of this topic, so today we're going to talk about soul goals. And before we do, I would really like your take on what is your soul. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, the soul is a very unique experience and it is something that I think is hard to put into words because it really is the felt sense and it's a sense of knowing and it's a, it's a feeling that's like deep down inside each one of us and is unique to us. But obviously words help us and a concept will help us to try and understand what it is that we're talking about when we're going to refer to the soul during our discussion and then also soul goals and what they are. So I have written this piece here. So I'll just read this out so our listeners can get a sense of what my concept is of what the soul is. So your soul is the part of you deep down inside that is aware of what you think, feel, observe and believe about yourself and the world around you. It is the pure energy of your inner being and the part of you that is always peaceful, whole and complete. Your soul is the source essence that chose your body, your mind and your heart for this life journey. And its purpose is to guide you to learn and grow from intuition, wisdom and love. That is so beautiful. You said it so eloquently and articulated it so well. As you said, it's not something that can really be explained in words to some extent. But I think if you had a choice of words, those are incredible. So thank you. Well, there was a few drafts doing that, you know, just over time trying to think like, how do I actually put on the words, the soul and do it justice? So that's just my interpretation of it. Um, And I hope your listeners uh, hear something from themselves and say the words that I have just read out. Yeah, I'm sure it's really going to touch them. I mean, I I got some nice feelings inside. And yeah, so when we think about our soul, how do we know, you know, how do we know we're in tune with our soul? How do we know that we know our soul, we're connected to our soul? So the soul, the experience of the soul, it's a felt experience, Steph. You know, it's not of the mind. 
you know, it's not in our heads and our thoughts. It's a felt sense. It's a feeling. It's a feeling that's in, within us, deep within us. And it's not so much that I feel that we really connect with the soul and its presence. I think that we become much more aware when we feel like a lost soul or we are so lost. I think that when we become disconnected from the world around us, or our happiness, or our peace, or contentment, or fulfillment of the life experiences that we have, when we become disconnected on the inside and become a bit so lost, I really feel that's when we start to feel like we're searching for a deeper meaning in life. We're searching for something else that is beyond the you know the world that's outside of us. That it's about the journey inward, and the soul is that part of you that's deep down inside that it you know, it could show up as a small whisper. Like I always had like this deep sense of there has to be more to life than this. I mean, I have mm-hmm. had that, you know, just like whispering at me for most of my life, but I didn't always listen to it. But it came to a point in my own life where that kind of sense of there has to be more to life than this just pushed me um, to search for more. And the beauty about it is, is there is more to life than this. You know, you're, life is not meant to be survived life is designed for you to grow and enjoy it and feel connected with the life experience and the journey that you have yeah that that is so well said I think you know the concept of being soul lost yeah I I really resonate with that because you can be very successful educated well manifested meaning You've had a great education, a great start to your career. You know, you've met a a really great partner. You want to build a life and everything. And it's what you kind of see on the TV and you're told that that's what's expected on your journey. You never really talk about the soul, so to speak, or how to connect with yourself. And personally, you know, I got to a point where I was like, if someone looked at me, you know, people would say, oh, you've done really well and you're really smart or you've had you've got a great career and you do all these great things. You know, you seem to have a very adventurous life, but you could be, you know, you could have there's no amount of money or adventures or um, stability in the world. If if inside yourself, you don't even feel connected to who you really are. And I think, you know, that soul lost, I, I definitely feel like whether it's soul lost and then you go into some kind of period of feeling like this the shadow of your soul the dark night of your soul where you feel completely nothing makes sense anymore you know you did all the things you know oh, I, I, you know I got the got the uni degree I got got the career up and running now I found the life partner I'm gonna I've got married or you know and then you still say but I something's not there like what is it why don't I feel right that that's that's definitely something that resonates for me. Uh, yeah, and I can hear what you're saying back to me. That kind of tick box um, list of life experiences that are supposed to make you feel happy, or that we measure success against, whether you know relationships, houses, family, travel, whatever that is. Those tend to be the goals that most of us, Steph, are familiar with. You know that goals are something that we set a target out there in the future and then we take action and steps towards it and then we get a day point in our life where we decide have we achieved that or not but the difference with a kind of like a soul goal is that you know you can reach those parts of your life you can reach those milestones of maybe it's you know graduated from uni maybe it's got a certain job a house whatever it is and you are there having achieved what you'd wanted to do but inside you're not sourced in a way that lets you fully connect and enjoy um, those achievements on the outside world because there's something missing inside yeah. you know and you're, you're chatting about being so lost there too as well and you know or the dark night of the soul you know um, being like a lost soul can also mean that you've been going down the wrong path for a long time too as well and then you've you've got to a point where it's like enough is enough I yeah. need 
something here. I need to do something. And, you know, it can often appear, you know, when we're chatting about becoming aware of our soul and connecting with it, I, I really do believe, and it's from personal experience, it was the disconnect that made me aware that there was something missing, you know? Yeah. And wanting that change and getting to a point where it's like enough is enough. And, you know, I need to, it's that breakthrough or breakdown or breakthrough, like where is yeah. that point in your life? Is it the, the crisis and what decisions do you make now about your future based on you've nearly maybe had a rock bottom or life has changed dramatically or there's just been something where you're just like, nah, that's it. And yeah. there's, like a, just a, there's just a call and it's like, you know, there's more to life than this. Now, I know I've said that that's my personal belief, but the listeners will have something that whispers to them. There'll, be, there'll just be this sense, like a, like a nagging almost. Yeah. <laughs> of no this this there there is more luck here you know there's a better quality of life available from you and sometimes it's about you know you becoming aware of where you don't feel aligned you know I would chat about alignment and non-alignment you know um and when you're loving closer to having the life experience that is aligned with your soul you will absolutely feel the benefit of that yeah and when you're not aligned you'll feel a bit lost yeah, it's, it's, it's so true. And I feel sometimes there's a couple of variables at play. There could be many more. And some of those, and we'll come on to maybe talk about that in a bit more detail, is the ego. Mm -hmm. We are in a very ego-driven society. So yeah. how much are you making? What are you doing with your life? How many kids have you got? What car do you drive? What is your job? Where do you live? It's It's literally like the data sheet on you know, your geo demographics of the type of person you are defines you. So unfortunately, we have that that's at play, right? And then what our family and friends expect of us. And you said something that really resonated for me. You said, you know, you might have gone down a certain pathway in life and you've gone so far down, then you're like, whoa, I've hit, you know, a roadblock or I'm just completely lost what's the next direction on this route and I think sometimes we live for others you know we live for the expectation of others we forget about self I think part of soul awakening soul alignment is is knowing what who we are deep down but what is right for us and it could be completely different to what mom or dad or cousins best friends family think and from a personal point of view, when you when I got to that point, I was like, oh, my gosh, everything I've done up to this point, I'm still a great person, but I don't agree with this. And everything that everyone else, their beliefs and their values or morals, they're not wrong for it, but that's not what's going to be my driving force. And so I then repelled and everyone thought I was crazy, probably. But I have to say this, I do not regret one moment of that journey because mm -hmm. right now to be here and I'm not going to shed any tears but it's an emotional moment to be yeah. able to talk about this with you Carla someone that gets it and that is helping others and that can talk about it in such a profound way and see the value and yeah. the benefit to our lives by going down this this journey of soul soul search soul alignment soul fulfillment is an absolute blessing on my soul to be able to, to say this to you out loud and to the listeners. So not for one second, it's been a tough journey, you know, like you go down the wrong route and you need to reroute. Imagine when you get lost in the car, right? Sat nav takes you down yeah. the wrong route. The sat nav dies. And this is my analogy. And I'm, you know, randomly throwing this one out there. Love sat -nav, it. Sat nav dies and you're in somewhere in, the countryside in Ireland because I quite like Ireland so let's just say Ireland and mm -hmm. you, and you and you're a British person you don't even know where the blooming heck you are and where do you go well you have to trust yourself yes. to find your own way right find your own way not anyone else's way but your own yeah and just to pick up on what you're saying there Steph about um you know loving a life that is almost conditional to what we're taught at school or what our family says or what our culture says or what our gender says or what the government says or what we could talk about that all day right <laughs> your truth 
your truth is your soul truth. And, and your truth is, you know that saying, you might have heard, the truth shall set you free, right? Yes. I mean, it's almost like that when we're loving a life that is not an alignment with who we our values and who we really are at the core of our being. And sometimes we don't know what that is, but we know what we don't want and we know how we don't want to feel. And yeah. we know by how we feel when we've got that job, but that's not for me or that's not the career because that is your truth. You know, the truth shall set you free, which is what matters to you, what adds value to your life. You know, they talk about the to-do list, right and I coach people in here all the time and I talk about well what's your to be list list? not just your to-do list and you know every um January whenever everybody kind of stereotypically sets goals and and I'm I'm mad about journaling and I write and write and write and you know I've got journals everywhere but at the, in January I always have like a kind of like a dreams list but I also have like a to be list and the to be list is really aligned with soul goals because the to be list is about how do I want to feel? What do I want to be? Do I want to be a good mother? Do I want to, um, you know, be a better coach? Do I want to feel peaceful? Do I want to have um, more work life balance? It's, it's all kind of felt sense stuff. And I think that we do get caught up loving life outside of ourselves. And then someday the penny drops or the bubble bursts and it's like, this doesn't have the meaning that I thought it was going to have. And in fact, I'm miserable, you know, and I'm just not, what am I doing? You know, Um, I think, sorry, sorry, I didn't didn't mean to cut across. And I think that I see that quite a bit in session because um, personally speaking, I think it kind of takes you to start to get into your 30s. For me, I had the kind of, you know, my 20s, the scary 20s, early 30s kind of. And then from that, it's like you're starting to look at, it's like you chanting about the sat-nav and then it goes down and you're like, where am I? And my life, what does, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> yeah. How, where do I even start to yeah. try to help myself or explain how I'm actually feeling on the inside, you know? And people find it really, really hard to, you know, to go on that search it is not for the faint-hearted oh oh my goodness like it's just that you just can't love a life that doesn't feel truthful for you whatever that means you know yeah no absolutely and one thing I have to share with you and the listeners is that when I got to that sat nav dead moment and said whoa I then I love what you said about the truth will shall set you free. Joanna, who's been on the podcast in previous series, I think she's even got the tattoo on her because that's been one of her biggest moments in her journey. So when she's listening, she's going to go, that's my saying. So it kind of got me excited, as you said it. But I then stood up and said, I'm going to speak my truth. And one of the people that was significant in my life, you know, parents, my mum had passed, but I spoke to my dad. He didn't get it, like some of the things I was saying. And he said, is it because mom passed? And bless him, you know, he he tried to rationalize me saying, I'm living in the wrong life. This is not for me. I I need to change everything. This I need to go in a different direction. And this and this and this, no, I'm going on ahead and I'm going to look at a divorce and, you know, all of this. And I'm leaving the country for a bit. I'm taking another job. He just thought I was going crazy. <laughs> and and I I always had a challenging relationship with my dad. I, I I'm a, I'm the youngest. I'm the only girl, so I was the pet, like almost to say. But then mm-hmm. you get rebellious. You get in your teenage years, and you get a bit, you know, rude, and you think you know it all. And so me and my dad had a challenging relationship. At least I can say that it's not been easy. And when I was going through these changes, he was completely unavailable like he was already unavailable because it was not an easy relationship emotionally he was never available to me as a child and that's his own you know his own life experience however at the time when you really feel like you need and this is I think one of the big parts of dark night of the soul those that you would think would be there for you are not and that hurts a lot but it also builds the resilience of becoming that whole soul 
and really finding your own self-love of your soul. And it's incredible because years later, now I can say to you today, I can honestly say to you today that I have a really great relationship with my dad that I would have never thought I would have ever had in my life. And I do truly believe that me finding my soul alignment staying true to myself and sticking to it, even though he didn't agree, because he never agreed with anything anyway, when I was doing my degree, it's like, why are you studying economics? You should do graphics because your dad has a graphics business and did all of it. You know, you need to be like your father. No, dad. (laughs) So I basically went down my own route. Everything I ever did was he'd always have something to say, but now I continue to do it. And I did it in such a transformational way. My dad is a, is available as much as he can possibly be within his own soul, right? Because yeah. he's on his own journey. So now it's not a fight. It's not a struggle. Hey, dad, how are you doing? Oh, it's nice to hear from you. Do you want to go out? Yeah. Like he would, he would shut down. No, I don't want to see you. Stay away from me. Like it would be so hard. And I think he can see my journey and where I'm at and see I'm truly aligned yeah. and I'm truly happy and at peace that he likes to be around me. He finds me the, I'm an energy now that he's like, wow, I, you know, I, I want to spend my last years with my family and obviously my daughter and, and, and even better, she's truly in alignment with herself. So I just wanted to share that because I had to go off and walk the woods by myself no family, lost a lot of my friends. And that's why, you, like you said, it's not for the faint hearted. It's, it's not an easy call, but if you do it, the rewards at the other side, they are priceless, aren't they, Carla? You just took the words out of my mouth. I was going to use exactly the same word. <laughs> and I think as well, Steph, that, you know, the work that we do in ourselves, right? Any work that upgrades your life in some way, upgrades your body, mind and soul, it doesn't have to be soul work. I know this is our topic, right? But, and that's the area that I chose to go on because it's very personal to me. Um, But anything that we do to take responsibility for the energy that we create and hear and then share with the world has a ripple effect around us anyway, right? So, I mean, the healing work that you did in yourself, yeah around your journey and being and lost and refinding or rediscovering who you are that there would involve you letting go of some limiting beliefs letting go of parts of your life that weren't in alignment with your soul it would involve a lot of excavation of kind of emotional debris and stuff that soul pains stuff that insulted your soul right yeah when you do that you make space, you, your energy shows up differently. So then what you receive back in is you're receiving back in evidence from the world around you that you're connecting with it on a better level than you ever did. Yeah. So, it's, you know, it's not like dad has changed, but the experience and the connection that you have with him energetically, emotionally, spiritually, whatever, right? Energy is all of that. What, how you think, how you feel, how you believe and how you behave um as he showed up differently for you because your space was different in there yeah absolutely and it's that typical kind of phrase where they say if you work on your internal your external environment changes tremendously right million percent a million percent and I mean it is it is that it's like you know um your perception and your filter of how you see your life and the people around you is colored by what is inside. So, you know, you're saying about making life changes in your own life. There is often things that need to be let go of in order to make space for the new, like I would often kind of say and here in session, you know, sometimes you have to let go to let in. That yeah. you can be absolutely bottlenecked with so much stuff that and so much just emotional stuff uh, experience from your life journey just whatever's in there you can just be filled bottlenecked with it and there's no room for anything else and sometimes at the early early stages it's about kind of just letting go what doesn't work for me what do I know that I don't want in my life before we can actually find that kind of soul goal of you know that feels a wee bit more intuitive a wee bit more from wisdom you're a hundred percent right there's tight there's a point in the journey where it feels like absolute like bewilderment 
and yeah. the middle of where it's lost, it does. Um, you know, but I do, I do believe that you have to be lost to find yourself, you know? Yeah, absolutely. So I think it, it's quite obvious to me what has inspired you to become a soul coach because of the way you're explaining all of this so far I feel the passion I feel the energy from you so that's definitely there's a lot of passion there's a lot of energy but what else inspired you to take this route I um I took this route based on my own experience right and that I really wanted to become a coach in this particular area because I wanted to become the person I would have needed 20 years ago oh that's you know yeah yeah that I would have needed just I needed a safe non-judgmental kind of confidential space that would allow you to discuss your inner workings because you know I in, in my past I had anxiety and depression and I was very much um, I was afraid to even share that because I became a mum when I was 20 and then you know having studied social psychology and then social work I used to think if I tell people that I have anxiety or depression that means that there's something wrong with me and I can't have the career I want or I can't I'm not a good mother or I'll even worse, like, you know, get, get put onto a hospital or something. So for a long time, my journey was very lonely and it was very, very, very inward where I did a lot of the work inside here and I didn't have anybody to kind of reach out to. And I'm sure my age now, like I'm 41, but... Um, we go very back. young. <laughs> very young. We go back 20 years. We didn't have social media. You never really Googled too much, you know, you know like you didn't have even the stuff online that you could kind of tend to your own needs on a personal yeah. way at home without, um, you know, having to go and speak to somebody in person. But that's not what I would have had, you know. And the options were very limited too. And some of the models that were used didn't encompass body, mind and soul. There was no holistic approach to it. So I'm just focused on what you thought and why and how you behaved and why. And nobody ever talked to you about, well, you know, in depth about what your feelings are, how they're linked to what you think and feel and believe. And, you know, and nobody talked about what you believe about the life, about yourself and the world around you and how limiting beliefs totally colour your life experience out here. Yeah. So I have obviously went on a journey probably about... um about 13 years ago I would say it is now and that came from a place for me where it was is this the breakdown or is this a breakthrough and thank god it was a breakthrough right like kind of like matrix moment red pill blue pill you know what route (laughs) here and I took the route the harder route of doing the bit of the, the, the soul searching and so the 13 year journey I have found lots of things that has been useful for me in my journey and I've also come across things that haven't been and I also was always mindful want to fix myself fix 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 and that left me quite vulnerable yeah to to just 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 to, just to certain things where I was always in the pursuit that my power was in somebody else's hands and that the, the ability to be fixed was out there which is the opposite it's the complete opposite Steph so you know I wanted to become a coach so that I could show up for other people the way that I really do feel like that would have really helped me. Um, shortcut out of my suffering and kind of, you know, into my happiness, my peace and contentment. That's beautiful. And I think it's inspiring because I, you know, personally, I've gone on my own healing journey and I have my own sort of soul life coach And she also has had her own experiences, which I think has led her to do what she does. And you Mm -hmm. find that you are so much more in tuned with that person because they've gone on a similar journey. Everyone's journey is different, but they understand, they appreciate, and there is no judging of who you are. And that's the safest place to be, to be vulnerable and not feel like you're being judged. So Mm -hmm. whoever you have as clients today, They are very, very fortunate. And for those that are listening, Carla, although she's based in Northern Ireland, will also meet, you know, new clients online as well. So if you are being called to look at your soul and you need some support, 
I know of uh, a couple of people that see Carla actually. So, and I know they're having a great experience of it. I've received some recent feedback that they had a fantastic session with you. No names mentioned for no. disclosure <laughs> of, of privacy. Um, but, you know, so if, if any of you guys don't feel afraid, you know, that we we all need, I think on our journey, someone that can help us along the way. They're not going to do the work for us. However, they will help us maybe gain the perspective or help us to see a clearer picture. And they will leave us to go and do the work ourselves, but we are all here to sort of help each other. And so you're not alone in that sense, is what I Mm. want to say to the listeners. Absolutely. And it's like, you know, as a soul coach, um, I help to guide people to find what they're looking for. You know, it's not like that you're handing over somebody like a sheet, do this, 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 and this, and that's you, that, that, that's you sort of, because I truly believe that um, you have to find your own uh, source of your own pain. And you also have to find that, that your own solution. And then when you can own the solution, then you stand, can you take your power back and the, you know, who you are. And I suppose that's, that's the difference between wanting to be fixed by someone yeah. and actually wanting to uh, someone to guide you to, to help you find yourself and rediscover who you are, you know, your soul underneath all of that crap that we've put on there, you know, on the life journey. And I mean, you know, the, to become a coach too, I mean, it's a, it could be a whole other video, but I mean, that just kind of, I was training alongside my, my career, which was learning disability and mental health. And I had been doing that, the good job step for 10 years. And I had four children, big mortgage, debt up to my eyeballs, no business plan. Not, soul coach was not, a, it was a concept that was born from my kind of heart and a vision that I have. But in terms of, the, logis- the logistics of it or a business plan, zero. And I remember to this day, the day that I was getting ready to go to work and um, in my previous job and I was doing makeup and looked at myself in the mirror and I was just like, I'm leaving. And I started to really chuckle and laugh. I said, I'm just leaving. And I get on the car and I run my husband and I said, I'm going on to work to hand on my notice. And he was like, right, okay. So it's a slow burner. He, he knew it, I wanted a change and I needed a change and I wanted to, I suppose being a mum from 20, my life was about everybody else. Yeah, of course. You know? Yeah. And then this was kind of the first decision I ever made for me. And the people say to me, oh my God, how did you do that? I would be sick to my stomach having done, you know, made a decision that quick. I think it was the first decision I ever made in my life that was about me and only me. So and I looked at myself in the morning, I was like, I am leaving. And I got under my car and I drove to work and I handed on my notice. <laughs> wow. I, you know, and I used to say to people, I don't need a plan. I just needed a dream. You know, and people would say it's all the way about, you know, you need yeah. to dream with a plan. You know, I had it in my heart. I had it in my soul. I had the vision. And I just, you know what? You just sometimes have to jump and the net appears. And that door had to close and you know so therefore I had to step up and to the person I always knew it could be and hence soul coach then has that was in 2017 so really started in 2018 and I mean I now get to do like I wouldn't even call this work Steph I mean this is just a gift this you know and I think I, and I feel like I'm using my life the way that it's supposed to and that you know any past pain or suffering or you know mistakes or whatever way life showed up up to now that I've been able to use that to help other people in their parts of their journey yeah so it's, it was never it was never wasted it was never wrong you know it was never there was never any part of my life that I could like I could hand back now because that would never have brought me to where I am kind of today and I'm well trained yes educationally but you know the school of life it's the experience that you have along with that is the you know that is how you graduate you know you need to yeah. have both you need to have both I think what I took from that is that you really found your true gifts mm-hmm. and I think where there is pain there is power and there is you know there is that moment of wow I see my light I I, I am my light I am 
my truth. I speak my truth. I live my truth. It's some of my affirmations I say every day, actually. So I was saying it with conviction there, but I feel you on that in so many levels because, I mean, like I said, being on this podcast right now, you know, years ago, I would say I was doing the podcast and it was going to be a completely different coverage, you know, different topics. But this is the type of podcast, mind, body, soul, empowerment, how to step change, transform your life, become a better person, be more in tune with your soul and be more in line, flow with the universe, co-create, don't become a victim of what is going on out there. Understand that you have that power. You are divine creation in itself. Yes. And, and to be able to share that, you know, with others and inspire others. I know that if I had that, when I was going through what I was going through, I mean, there was, there was platforms and, and some information out there, but probably not as much available at the time. I don't know if it was just because I had to go through it much more alone to be able to be here today you know a bit like yep. you so yep. th- th- there is there's a, there's a reason for everything and when you look back in hindsight it might have felt like a painful journey but it's actually every part of it was part of a divine sequence that absolutely the soul school <laughs> yeah and actually on that I wanted to get into Okay, what are soul goals and soul school and mapping this all out? Like, how does it work? And what do you do with your clients when you consider soul goals? Okay, so soul goals, right? So soul goals are like what we've said on here, you know, they're goals about how you want to feel on the inside and that they align with your kind of heart's desire and your spirit's desire. That's what soul goals are. Examples of soul goals would be inner peace becoming whole again, trust in the process, forgiveness of self and others, letting go of the past, making a difference, giving and receiving love, joy, or, you know, to be a good mother, a good sister, a good wife, a good husband, you know, just those are soul goals. Soul goals have have meaning that's personal for you. And how people, like what we said at the start, how people can identify soul goals is often by coming over the door here for coaching because these are, they're feeling the opposite of those. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it's often that it's, you know, inner peace has and always will be Steph, my main goal. Without that, I haven't access to anything in my life if I don't have inner peace here. It doesn't matter what else. I, if I don't have that, then, uh, you know, my life doesn't have meaning. And that came from being a tortured soul, from mm-hmm. being demented, would be a word we were using there a lot, you know, a tortured soul. I had so little inner peace that my inner peace is paramount for me right now, even above family, because I had my family, but without the inner peace, I didn't get the experience the love and the the quality of life that I could have without it so you you know it's kind of almost like soul goals need to come as a default of being having it yeah they don't need to be too they don't need to be too thought out in the mind either they're like a felt sense and you know that they're yours by how you feel and how you want to be you know um and it's about like soul goals can also have a different flavor like their goals that add meaning and purpose to your life. So they're but aspirational. And, you know, we're not saying the goals of getting a home and a career. We're not saying that there's anything negative about those. We're just simply making the contrast that there is a to-do list in life of, of, of getting an achievement out here. And there's also mm-hmm. one internal milestone yeah. and goals that you have that have meaning and purpose for you. So, you know, a soul goals would have a sense of meaning give a sense of meaning and purpose to life so like me becoming a coach um has given my life so much meaning and purpose I can imagine and I do feel like when you take a look back and I hope the listeners you know reflect a wee bit on this about you know how they're measuring their own life and what matters to them you know, and there's been a lot that is going on in the world right now where it's maybe having people pause and reflect on actually what really does have meaning and purpose and matters to me. 
And you see, when you find that, Steph, you, you build yourself a lovely foundation, right? You build a lovely platform when you go within. Yeah. Whatever, whatever's going on outside your life, then you can connect with that in a better way. It's like you chatting about your dad. It's me chatting about, you know, being a mother or connecting with family or, or, or being a wife. You know, when there was stuff in the way of that, you know, I wasn't able to fully enjoy that. And when I got and cleared and, you know, uh, got to a point in my life where all that, all how I was feeling on the inside allowed me to fully you know, receive and give the love and, you know, have inner peace in my life. You know, it just allowed me to experience my outside world the way that I always knew I should have. Yeah, this receiving topic and your point of expansion before, I feel that they're connected because if you want to receive and experience love and give and receive, if you're, you know, if you're holding so much within Mm -hmm. and you're, you're almost creating that self-torture. There's not space to give and receive trust and love inwardly. Like if you really inwardly trust yourself, love yourself, connect with yourself, then the connections that you have with others would almost magically reflect that real self, you know, knowledge and trust and goodness that you've got inside. It would, it manifests externally, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but so the stuff that we gather on our life journey and your soul journey. So when people have, you know, some heavy stuff in their past and some people might not have heavy traumatic stuff, but they still feel a certain kind of way. And then oh, they yeah. feel like, why do I feel like this? Because I haven't had any big life event that's made me feel like this. That does not matter. How you feel is an indication of where you're at, you know, and mm-hmm. whenever you are feeling like, Whenever you have a lot of storage of stuff, you get blocked, and then the ability to give and receive anything is going to be compromised. Yeah, you know, and when you're blocked with that stuff, that's a barrier to you engaging yeah. <laughs> and, and life in the way that you want. Like, you might want that coming in, but that's not what's inside. So, you know, you're coming up against maybe lots of anger, you're coming up against frustration, you're coming up against bad relationships, you're coming up against, you know whatever it seems like problems or difficulties out here, it's because you have limiting beliefs in here. Yeah. Or colouring your experience, you know? Yeah, this is really well articulated. Thank you, Carla, because you said something that I really just want to highlight. You may have not experienced something that was traumatic or life-changing, but still not be happy. And see, I've spoken about the topic of childhood trauma in one of the earlier series, And, you know, a lot of people have gone through like quite traumatic childhoods or parents have broken up, abusive families. And so naturally that will have an impact to their adult life. But I've got friends and I know many people that have had a more smoother upbringing. Right. And there's not been anything that overtly explicit that the childhood or the earlier years, your first 20 years of life have been terrible. You know, you might have had quite a smooth sailing. But that mm. doesn't mean that there are, like you said, I think it's these limiting beliefs, the the way your experiences have made you feel, think. And you might go to the thinking side of it rather than how does it make me feel? And you just keep going. It's like autopilot, but you don't feel right inside. Yeah, it's almost like you can you, you're kind of thinking, well, what if I why am I feeling like this? Or what, you know, I should be grateful, or you know, my life should be A, B, and C. When you're starting to have that type of phrases in your life, then it's time to take a wee look, you know? Yeah. And I think you know, I have people in here um in session quite a bit, and you know, it's it makes it nearly harder. Sometimes that when someone feels a certain kind of way here in the now and they're reflected on their past and there's and they're just like, but what if why am I feeling like this? You know, why I shouldn't be feeling like this? And they're putting their head onto how they feel when really, you know, it is about looking at um, you know, your life journey, I call them soul pains, Steph, you know, mm-hmm. um, that your life journey will have soul pains in it. And that you will have there'll be moments. They may not be big major traumas. That that is okay. It doesn't always have to be a big major event. But there are moments where our soul gets wounded yeah. along the journey. You know, that's a, and we gather that up, or or that we're not loving. It's like what you're saying. That we've 
you know, we wake up, you know, in our thirties, and it's like, I didn't choose this career. I, I don't want to do that. I don't, want, <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want this. I don't like that. And we get under that kind of a zone where we're, you know, where we're we're feeling that way, you know. Yeah. And those are kind of like soul pains where sometimes you just go down your just on a different path, and you know. Then one day recognizing this isn't for me. When did I decide on my journey that I wanted to go to? I'm telling by myself here, university twice. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when did I? You know, where? And that all came like programming. You know, from school and get a good job and da, 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 yeah. da. And then, then you're sitting with all that, and you're ten years down, and you're going, you're putting on your makeup in the mirror, and you're going, I'm going down to hand on my notice. Who cares about <laughs> <laughs> the job? Yeah. That, you know, and, uh, you know, so that's, everybody's got a very unique journey. There is nobody that doesn't have their pains and their stuff, you know? Yeah, of course. And every pain will be uniquely different from one to the other. And I think, you know, it, it's that lever between the soul and the ego and how much your ego sort of builds a lot of your um, earlier life and then wants to just take the lead all the time. Um, yeah it's a survival your ego's survival a life is surviving you know um what conditions are in your life and in your soul is growth yeah and, and your soul trusts trust and knowing and belief and evolving and there's no control needed over it whereas yeah the ego's like survival and you know fear based and comparison and and you know measurement and stuff uh, I mean, I've got something here, if you think it would be useful just for the listeners, just to do that kind of duality and that contrast between ego versus soul. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love that. I think that would be great for them. So, okay. So this isn't my words, by the way. So just whoever wrote this, uh, fair play to you. It's great. So, (laughs) (laughs) So ego seeks to serve itself. Soul seeks to serve others. Ego seeks outward recognition. Soul seeks inner authenticity. Ego sees life as a competition. Soul sees life as a gift. Ego seeks to preserve itself. Soul seeks to preserve others. Ego looks outward. Soul looks inward. Ego feels lack. Soul feels abundance. Ego is mortal, soul is eternal. Ego is drawn to lust, soul is drawn to love. Ego seeks wisdom, soul is wisdom. Ego enjoys the prize, the soul enjoys the journey. Ego causes pain and soul causes healing. Ego is me, soul is we. Ooh, I've got tingles. <laughs> that was so that was so soul enriching. I could feel it in my soul. Beautiful. Thank you. I, I love that. I I want to get into, you know, once you start to go down that route of, okay, I, I know what or I feel what my soul is craving or where I want to go in terms of soul alignment. I want inner peace. I want to be more grateful. I want to have a more a uh, high vibrational life with more positive souls around me and I want to co-create with the universe whatever those those goals are how do you really put that into action Carla like what what would you say to the listeners what, what's kind of maybe some tips or things to consider when they're planning their their souls goals <laughs> soul goals yeah 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 So, I mean, there's ways to kind of source your soul, right? That would be kind of my language. So feed your soul, whatever, you know. And I'll use the word alignment because alignment for me is about how you feel, right? Yeah. And alignment is about, you know, what what are you thinking? What are you feeling? How are you feeling? How are you behaving? And what actions are you taking? And what are you believing? And looking at that and deciding, is that in alignment with my soul or we've just talked about the ego or ego, right? And when we're chatting here about ego, we're not chatting about arrogance and someone that is overconfident. We're chatting about that 
growth as soul, survival as ego, that kind of light and dark, light and shadow kind of side. Um, but every day you get up, you have a choice about how you want to create your day. Yeah. You know, whether well, people are open to that as lesson or not, we do. But every day you have a choice to take responsibility for the energy that you create and share with the world, right? Yeah. So when I think about, I think about sourcing my soul and I think about things, well, how have I done that? So intentional, you know, setting out intentions at the start of a day, intentional love and be mindful, you know, of how you're showing up and the vibe you're bringing or the yeah. vibe you're sent ahead of each day, right? Gratitude is my number one go-to, right? So gratitude, I'll not get into it here, but gratitude is an energy of the heart center, right? Yeah. And yeah. the heart center is responsible for transformation and change, obviously, and that's where we can carry a lot of our material in there. So if you think about the practice of gratitude, you're thinking about what you're grateful for, but you also have to practice how you feel with that. So you're almost dropping from your head down into your heart and I just really feel like that that for me being grateful even if you're having a hard time and all that you're grateful for is that it hasn't happened to somebody else or I'm grateful for the awareness that I can do better than I did today you know yeah. you know, measurements of gratitude it's not about this Pollyanna view of the words wonderful you know it's not it's it's using I'm just using that, I'm using the vibration of gratitude to help you transform your life. So for me, that's good at sourcing your soul, right? Yeah. And when, and when you're sourcing your soul and you're doing things that add in there, then that helps you identify your soul goals. So yeah. say things like journaling, I mean, you know, getting pen to paper and setting out actual goals as a list, that's perfect. But I would ask people then to write out what the kind of, what it is that they would want and why. Yeah. And Think about the to be list, not just the to do list. We're very wrapped up in action, survival, and all oh, 20 million things to do in a day. So, you know, um, practices of kindness and compassion, mm -hmm. right? That will source your soul and help you to become aligned with your soul goals. So, if you've got a soul goal of inner peace and then you're out in your day to day life hating the world, <laughs> gossiping, <laughs> bitching, going on. You're going, you are creating a massive gap between you achieving your soul goal and actually how you're showing up. So the yeah. alignment is the closing of that gap. And every day you get a choice, am I an alignment or not? You know, and we're human beings, like it's a there is nobody that's perfect, you know. And I don't want, you know, listeners thinking that, you know, in order to be connected with your soul, that you must be some perfect human being. That's it's not, it's it's a journey. And it's a journey about you know, learning and growing from your life experiences, but we, 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 with like a kind of motivation to do better or show up better when you get the chance. And when you know better, you do tend to do better, you know? Exactly. Um, and just things like, you know, being open-minded and accepting um, is really useful for... Um, you know, connecting with your own soul goals, especially now the way the kind of world is at the minute. There's a lot of egos, there's a lot of opinion, and there's a lot of difference and there's a lot of division. And just allowing your energy to be open and accept. And like we've all got our part to do, Steph, even though we think that we're on a podcast now and, and the rooms in our own houses or whatever, you know, we our energy and how we show up in the world and our relationships and our work online like this it creates a ripple effect and you know if we all do our part to take responsibility for our energy and the upgrade of that and and thinking about your soul goals as giving you an upgrade then you know that's helping to make a difference I totally agree and I like the term of the more we heal the more our earth and the planet and humanity heals and we all rise up mm -hmm. so those are those are magnificent tips, I have to say. So for the listeners, I hope that helps you. And I personally quite like to use some of the lunar cycles as well with the yes. full moon and the new moon to kind of help bolster some of the activity. So and I want to mention this, you know, I've set soul goals, you know, internally with myself and but it doesn't mean that I stop and I'm still growing every day. And you made a good point that 
you know, none of us are perfect. You know, you might have a day where you're showing up a little bit out of alignment and you did really well the day before, but don't be hard on yourself. And that's part of the soul's journey and part of soul growth. It's like continual refinement and tweaking and improving. And there's no, there's never an end goal. It's just, I like to say uh, every day, how can Steph be better? Oh, I had a really crappy moment yesterday. How could I, you know, if I was to go into the same situation again, how do I show up different? So I'm always continually trying to see how I can, you know, show up different, better, and, you know, and, and not be focused on the external or other people, but on myself and becoming better. So that links to soul growth. And I thought, it'd be really nice to wrap up this episode on soul goals, talking about as you have those goals, you know, your soul will be accelerating, growing, you know, could you share a bit more of your wisdom, Carla, on this? Well, absolutely. It's a journey. You know, it's not even, it's not a chapter. It is a journey and it is a journey of growth. And what you're saying there, it's just that opportunity that, you know, that you can learn and grow from your life experiences with the intention that you're looking to evolve and to the highest version of yourself. Um, and on that journey, you've grown pains. You know, it's not, it's not always that easy. And, you know, you do get your tests and, and, and things show up and you might come away from it and think, God, I just wasn't the best version of myself there now in that. But even the fact that you're aware of that is good. So even you're not aware of that, that's a different story. So, you know, being human, you know, someone once asked me to, you know, how, how do you be a good coach? And I says, you, you get good at being human. You know, it's not about being perfect. You get good at being human. But back to what you're asking, you know, soul growth, look, continual process, right? And it's a journey of alignment and choice and knowing better and doing better every day. And I just have a wee quote that I had wrote, which is the soul is far too precious to have a part-time place in your life. So you're always going to be chipping away at it. You know, it's once you start to connect with that part of you, it as just something that you know deserves to have its full place in your life you know and it's not going to be a part-time place I love that oh Carla your quotes some of your inserts that you've read today and all of the things that you've said have really inspired me um, reminded me of why I came on my journey and why I'm here with you and I hope it re- and I feel it I feel that our listeners will be inspired and they'll take away a lot from today's episode. So I have to thank you. I have extreme amounts of appreciation and gratitude for you. Thank you for your time and all of your great wisdom that you've shared. Oh, you're so welcome. It's been an absolute pleasure. It really has. And it's just been very, a very natural step for us to kind of, which had about alignment for us to come online and um, have this conversation. And I, and I hope that it lands where it needs to with your listeners who ever needed to listen to this, you know, and I hope it was useful and helpful. Thank you, Carla. And I hope that we could collaborate some more in the future, maybe even in person. So yeah. I, I want to come to Derry, but you're more than welcome. <laughs> you're more than welcome in London, but I think Derry. Invite open. Invite open. <laughs> so um, before we wrap up, I'd really like to share with the listeners where they can find your social page because you put some great content up. I do share some of your content on our Divine Feminines page, but where can they find you and also even to contact you about soul coaching? Yes, absolutely. So my social media platforms are Soul Coach on Facebook and Soul Coach Therapy on Instagram. And my website is www.soulcoachtherapy.com. So I can be contacted by a private message or an email uh, through my website. And absolutely, I mean, the world has become a much more connected place online um, so sessions are available online for anybody that would be interested. So just get in touch. Thank you so much. So I will also add your details when we post up and your handles. And guys, we're always sharing Carla's content. She's got such great content. I enjoy it a lot. So you can look out for that. If you want to follow Carla, please do. I think if you like our page, you'll love Carla's page too. They're they're sisters in the uh, Instagram world. (laughs) 
sisters. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And so usually we end the, every episode with something like a quote or um, a, a piece of content that is inspiring. And today Carla has a lovely insert from the writer Donna Ashworth that she will leave us with. Yes. So this is lovely. This just speaks to the soul. Okay, so have the courage. Have the courage to love as a whole, to listen to your heart, to talk to your soul, to know who you are when others do not, to look out for vibes, to filter your thoughts. Have the heart to appreciate life, to laugh and to cry, to accept both are right, to go with the flow when the winds of change rage, to learn to let go, to break free from that cage. Have the vision to share your own story. The ugly truth heals as much as the glory. Pass down your lessons, the joy and the pain. Remind those who follow to dance in the rain. Have the patience to wait for the signs, but never stop living, enjoying the ride. Listen to silence as loud as the screams. Respect life's sorrows.